people yeah okay so all right so as i said earlier um barbados is all reparations so barbados is an island nation in the caribbean that's where my father's side of the family is from um so as i mentioned earlier uh the Bajan prime minister her name is, is Mio motley she did a lecture at the London School of Economics recently. And she spoke to a group, you know, regarding the need for reparations. So we're going to watch a little bit of that clip. Uh, this is from the Caribbean Broadcast Company. Um, so let's watch and see what she says here. These conversations are painful. And these conversations may offend some, but they ought not to because we are mature and we must have the capacity to have mature conversations because we are not children. And that ability to have conversations, even when we are directly complicit, must never escape us. That was the example of Nelson Mandela in his determination that there should be a Truth and Reconciliation Commission that would allow people the opportunity to share and to breathe. Racism is not only white on black, not black on white, white on Indian, Indian on black, black on Indian, Indian on Chinese. What stops us from recognizing humanity in each other? And that's why in 2018, and consistently since then, on behalf of my nation, we call for global moral strategic leadership. Because what the world needs now more than ever is, love. is people who understand that principle must guide actions. We love moral strategic leadership. Sounds like another country right now can use some of that. Yes, I, there's a lot of countries who could use some of that. Um, right, but one in particular that's been getting a lot of focus yes. in the news right now. So. Yep. Um, so let's go over to the Guardian. Um, don't typically like using them, but it is what it is in this case. Yep. Uh, article written by Amelia Gentleman, I like that name, um, mm -hmm. where she writes, Barbados PM says a country owed $4.9 trillion Jesus. as she makes fresh call for reparations. Mia Motley tells London audience, one that you watched there, that King Charles's comments about slavery impact were welcome. Mm -hmm. So, uh, which we've talked about before. Yes. King Charles's comment that the time has come to acknowledge the enduring impact of slavery has been welcomed by the Prime Minister of Barbados as she spoke in London about the need for reparations. Mia Motley said Barbados was owed $4.9 trillion or 3.9 trillion pounds by slave-owning nations, knowing that conversations over how this debt should be repaid will be difficult and will take time, she said on Wednesday evening. We're not expecting that the repertory damages will be paid in a year or two or five because the extraction of wealth and the damages took, took place over centuries. But we are demanding that we be seen and that we are heard, she said. Motley met David Cameron on Tuesday, but will not give details of the Foreign Secretary's thoughts on the UK's slavery-related debt. I'm not going to get into the details of our conversation, but suffice to say, I think the Foreign Secretary will take his lead from His Majesty, she said. During a speech at the London School of Economics International Equities Institute, she repeatedly commended King Charles's apparent willingness to confront slavery. Her belief in the King's openness to discussion stems from a speech he gave in June 2022 at the Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting in Rwanda. The King spoke of his personal sorrow at the suffering of so many and how he continues to deepen his understanding of slavery's enduring impact. He added, to forge a common future that benefits all our citizens, we too must find new ways to acknowledge our past. This is a conversation whose time has come. The speech made no reference to financial reparations. 
Uh, so just as an aside, we talked about last year. Yeah, last year. Yep. How there was a study. There have been studies done in the UK regarding. Turns out, surprise, not surprise, that, that, that was the called. royal family in the UK is tied to slavery, more specifically in Virginia. So they have direct uh, ties to actually, you know, bring about slavery in this country. Um, so that's kind of, I'm sure, what he might be referring to uh, here. But anyway. Since becoming Prime Minister in 2018, Motley has become a powerful voice globally on the legacy of colonialism and has helped transform the call for reparations into a mainstream political issue. Citing calculations made in a report by the Brattle Group, which factors in the wealth and GDP amassed by countries that enslaved African people, she set out that the UK owes $24 trillion in reparations to 14 countries affected by transatlantic slavery. Spain owes $17.1 trillion, France owes $9.2 trillion, and the Netherlands owes $4.86 trillion. Mm. These numbers, if taken out of context, can appear to be staggering. But in relation to the total wealth accumulated over a period of time, the numbers are actually minuscule, said Mali. Addressing the historical legacy of slavery would allow the global community to move on in strength rather than languishing in the shadows of a disgraceful history, she said. Motley said the call for reparations had gained urgency in the wake of the Black Lives Matter movement and the murder of George Floyd in 2020. For the first time, the world recognized that we could no longer ignore the trauma of four centuries of enslavement and barbarism and of denying people of their humanity, she added. I want to salute the king for having the courage to understand that this is a conversation whose time has come. She was more reserved about some recent pledges to pay reparations made by institutions in the UK which she noted had sometimes ignored the agency of Black people when not done after conversation and not done after negotiation. She questioned whether the 100 million fund announced earlier this year by the Church of England to address historical slave trade links was adequate. I want to thank the Church of England for agreeing to pay 100 million pounds. The only difficulty is that there is no conversation and the difficulty remains that this may not in any way come to closing the gap. She said. So I did a little quick research. So basically that 100 million essentially went to like community organizations right. uh, that the Church of England kind of identified, you know, as having need. Um, I put that um, and clip you're talking about where we talked about King James's. Uh, yeah. Speech. Charles, not James. Sorry. Charles, um, yeah. But yeah. Um, yeah. So go check that out. So yeah, uh, right. But the issue that me uh, Mia brought up, I think, is the idea of the idea of reparations should be, at least in my mind, giving actual individuals money. Now, huh? well, it's not to say I have difficulty in saying that. I think it's a part of it. But I think the main issue that Mia is discussing here is that Black people need to be a part of the conversation in terms of how that money should be given and how, how that money should be used. Right. Just giving it away <laughs> to community organizations while it might be helpful, and again, it's kind of questioning what community organizations are these organizations? Are they really going mm -hmm. to help in terms of helping the economic um status of black people well, we, we know case. a lot of these nonprofits. Yeah. uh I, I forget there was an article came out today or yesterday over in mint press about uh nonprofits being used essentially as you know slave labor um yes so you know that's that could be directly funding more slavery if it's going to the wrong ones so right you know you know so the issue that i think mia is kind of bringing up although she does here is economic um, stability. Yeah. Uh, that may not mean just giving money in people's hands, though that could be part of it, but it has to be in a large mm -hmm. in a larger conversation where black people's voices are represented and heard. Well, we've, and that we've covered CARICOM's, we're making the decision. CARICOM's demands, which almost none of them were direct money. It was a lot of like 
other tangibles. So, right. You know, um, but yeah. So, um, oh God, we get Rishi, Rishi Sunak, involved. He's, uh, yeah, he's a UK PM. Rishi Rish. has rejected suggestions that this has rejected suggestions that the UK should pay reparations for its role in slavery, saying that trying to unpick our history is not the right way forward and is something we will focus on, not something we will focus our energies on. No, because it could have had... you're Indian. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. But no, yeah. you're... Well, yeah. No, you're Indian, sir. Like... Yeah. Allegedly. <laughs> your country was colonized itself. Yeah. So... You know... He could be a, an elaborate Trudeau. Don't worry about it. <laughs> you know. Um, yeah. um, and not that, that any of these things funny. affect, like, you know, those affect now, right? Like, those, those picking our way through history, turns out history repeats and has, like, right. butterfly effects. Like, there's literally, you know, could you imagine the world if slavery didn't happen? Just at all, right? Like and the the gall of Sunak. I believe we talked yes. about this many a couple of years ago that he wasn't born into money. Like his no. family were immigrants. Like yeah, he just happened to use his education in order to make his way to where he is now, and he married into money. Yeah. But his parents, at least growing up, were middle class. So. The idea of him saying this now he has a little bit of cash in his pocket and has power, I think is literally rich of him. Oh, and we get we um, get all the shitty UK folks, huh? Cameron's here. <laughs> um, yeah. Cameron, in a 2015 trip to Jamaica, acknowledged that slavery was abhorrent in all its forms, but said he hoped we can move on from this painful legacy. So nothing to yeah, see here. <laughs> Right. <laughs> Nothing to see here. Where's my fucking... Um... Nothing to see here! Please, it's first! You know... Um, but I do want to... But I do want to mention something. I know you had some thoughts. Uh, sure. When we spoke about this on Monday night. I'm sure you wanted to share. But it did think... I did think about this in terms of how Mia mentioned reparations versus how reparations are mentioned in this country yes what was interesting was mia brought up reparations in terms of the countries that it affected and right. you know just the idea of you know like the uk is responsible spain is responsible the netherlands is responsible france is responsible um here, it's more the idea of America is responsible. Now, don't remember, this country came to be in part mostly due to the British, at least in terms of the Revolutionary War. So, and I think generally we tend to forget that, that, you know, like we have to think globally in terms of reparations, especially if you're speaking of it in that way. But often what I do notice, especially among the FBA slash ADOS community, mm -hmm. is that they kind of keep it in yeah, terms Amer of, African oh, Americans. this is America. Yeah. It, like, and keep it to African Americans only. Like, you can join, like, and I find, like, in conversations with them, and I've mentioned this before, it's like, yeah, you can support us in what we're doing here, but you can go and do your own thing over here because you're not necessarily one of us and we stick to our own thing here. Whereas Mia kind of brought it on a global scope in the sense of everyone is responsible, which yes. that's kind of the role that I kind of take, you know, in this. It shouldn't be just limited to uh, just Amer African Americans alone. Even, I, well, I'll say this. Yes, there are specific issues that may be culturally that might make your needs slightly different in terms versus maybe me. Right. But in the overall scheme of the idea of what reparations is and how that has affected us in terms of being Africans, we need to speak about this more in a more global way, uh, which I don't think we do often. Actually, I would argue we don't do at all. 
Um, there was a point that you made to me. Yeah. Um, that, I think on Monday night. That like I don't I don't think there's a single country that hasn't been involved in some form of slavery or another, you know. And I think that that's part of this conversation. That like there th this has been a global issue there's been tons of of like you know i mean like we could talk about i mean tibet we could talk about like you name you name them they've used some so i think some form of global summit where everyone meets and talks about what's been done you know and try to affect that and fix the inequities that are here you know would be nice right um right i do think here's the thing and i know when we had this discussion about reparation last time people were in the chat were like well why not like a lot of the things that black people are doing why not make them for everybody right Reparations is not a and or. Yes. It, like it's like it like the the way I see it, it shouldn't be an and or. Like it and and like you can advocate for those things. You yeah. should advocate for those. As black people, we want those same things too. It's just I think for us is having and and you said this the other night that I do want to kind of make clear to people like. When we're asking for reparations, I'm not asking you to give me money. Right. Like, and you notice what Mia did. She didn't attack white people, people. specifically. She attacked the establishment. And the government attacked, and the companies that have made money made, off this inequity. Right. Like. Right. So let's get that clear. Like, and I know a lot of people online are kind of like, well, my family wasn't responsible for reparate, like for the destruction of. No. We're not talking about you all individuals. We're talking yeah. about the systems and the corporation. Well, now, especially a lot of them and the governments that took in that wealth that have made money and made their riches off that wealth off our backs. That's yeah. what we're, that's who we're kind of, aim at least that's where we should be aiming at. Yeah. Um, but you mentioned, so yeah, you mentioned that. So I wanted to make that clear, but I think, in terms of the larger conversation of, you know, how our reparation call kind of relates to other maybe areas of the world. And, and obviously we're thinking, you know, of Gaza right now. Like, you can almost make the argument they're due reparations too in light yeah. of, you know, what they've lost under the Israeli occupation over the last 75 years. I definitely think there needs to be and I think Mia pointed out we need to have tough conversations where we have to reveal our shared humanity and what we can do collectively to ensure that every human on this earth is being taken care of for and respected in a way that they're able to economically thrive. Right. That being said, there are issues within my community and in the diaspora, African diaspora at large that up until maybe recently have been ignored and yeah. have not been addressed and economically physically mentally psychologically we've been affected as a result mm. so really what we were looking for is the idea of look we understand these are tough conversations but kind of giving lip service in terms of, oh, yes, we understand, we feel sorry for you, we recognize your issue, and then just kind of move on. Right. It's not going to make the situation go away. Yeah, yeah you don't like, want, we, you don't want pats on the head. Like, no, you don't, you don't want, I saw we, like, that's not what you want. Right. You want, like, pay me my, right. where my money? Where, where my well, goods? No. Where my uh, services? I don't even say, well, not even saying I want money. It's not necessarily I want cash in hand. The biggest thing that we don't necessarily talk about is economic empowerment. Sure. That does not necessarily mean money, though it could be a part of that. 
Right. And I think that's the conversation that we need to have is what will make, what would be fair in terms of making our community economically viable in terms of how, how much we have lost in the 400 plus years of being kidnapped and shipped over to the yeah. Western Hemisphere. No, I get it. But that being said, I also recognize that, yeah, that other countries and different groups of people around the world, that might have gone through a similar thing too. Yeah. Bring it all to the table. Mm -hmm. Like, we need to be having those discussions anyway. So if anything, the way I kind of see it, our conversations that we're having should hopefully open the door for others to have those conversations as well. Because ultimately, I want to make sure if I'm going to be economically taken care of, I want to make sure my brothers and sisters in the world are also economically taken care of and they're able to thrive. So, Speaking of brothers and sisters... You got you got this yeah, brother so, who I'm sure is right on right on track with where you are. So right, so this is from African Stream, uh, and that's I think he was actually at a class, so it's essentially a poem. But kind of what I was saying before, in terms of the disconnect, you know, that I think within the Black community, especially on the diaspora level, that we often have in terms of. Oh, we have the African Americans here. We have the Caribbean here. We have the African here. We have the European Blacks here. You know, he just makes it clear that, well, you'll see. So go ahead and play. Africans here in the U.S. are English-speaking Africans. Africans in Trinidad are English-speaking Africans. Africans in Jamaica are English-speaking Africans. Just like Africans who live in Ghana, just like Africans who live in Kenya, just like Africans who live in Zimbabwe. English-speaking Africans are still Africans, no doubt about it. Africans in Haiti are French-speaking Africans. Africans in Martinique are French-speaking Africans. Just like Africans who live in Guinea, just like Africans who live in Algeria, just like Africans who live in the Congo. French-speaking Africans are still Africans, no doubt about it. Africans in Cuba are Spanish-speaking Africans. Africans in Colombia are Spanish-speaking Africans. Africans in Venezuela are Spanish-speaking Africans. Just like Africans who live in Equatorial Guinea, Spanish-speaking Africans are still Africans, no doubt about it. Africans in Brazil are Portuguese-speaking Africans. Just like Africans who live in Angola, just like Africans who live in Mozambique, just like Africans who live in Guinea-Bissau, Portuguese-speaking Africans are still Africans, no doubt about it. We're all Africans, we're all Africans, we're all Africans. Learn to explain it, learn to celebrate it, learn to defend it. Yeah, so yeah. I think just the whole point is that we're all tied to Africa. So we really shouldn't have, so I think again with this question, that's this discussion about reparations, it really should be, and I've said this many times on this podcast, that really should be a global conversation in terms of obviously there's going to be some cultural uh, differences, you know, that variations of what reparations will look like, depending where you are in the world. But the idea of reparations as a whole should still be discussed. And yeah. as I said, you know, let's have this be a conversation where we elevate others, other marginalized communities who maybe not in necessarily an extreme way for as, as far as Black, you know, people have experience in the West. But the idea of overall, like, how can we ensure that our fellow man, no matter where they are in the world, are economically thriving? What would that mean? And so, and as Mia said, you know, like, we shouldn't be afraid to have those conversations. Well, I think, Most of those I think it's definitely, be very... it's time to start having that conversation in general. You know, I, I, I talked about, like, I'm pretty sure my family was indentured servants and AKA slaves. Like it's, you know, uh, the the native people here definitely were exploited, and right. you know, like uh, Asian Americans, uh, especially on the West Coast, definitely exploited, and you know, like the Irish would also like some words. So would the Italians. Like, you know, there's a there's a lot of that, and uh, some reparations for that might have already happened. You know. Right. So, but it's it's time to start having these conversations and come to the table and do the math and do the history and get it over with and figure it out. So, you know, but yeah, anything else to add? 
I think I think that's no, just about I it. Think, yeah. So But let us know in the chat, you know, what you think. Yeah. Um and again, you know, we I know again, we may not necessarily agree and I know we you've kind of not to say you don't agree, but I think you're yeah. very open to the idea of like let's bring this up to the table and actually being on the show, it kind of helped me think about that a little bit more sure. in terms of how in certain ways we can make the idea, like the things that we kind of, well, uh, well, I'll say for African and Americans, you know, like you need to have a point plan of what you look Yeah. Like give it, give me a play. Yeah. Give me something. That's, that's my thing. Right. I think a lot of Americans don't know, you know, like there's there is no plan right. necessarily. There's some talks, and we've had some revolutionaries say some things, but like, get a plan together and bring it to the table and work it out. Like I think it's that right. simple. So leave a comment. What do you think should be in the plan? Um, be sure <coughs> to share this so that other people can start having this conversation. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to see more of this content. Um, help us get to 2K subs. We appreciate it. Shouldn't be that bad, you know. Get the get that out to the people. We gotta we gotta get out under from under the suppression. It would be nice. But all right, anyone on Rumble or Rock? Uh, Anna Mayers is on the Rock Fin. She's saying hello, superstars. Um, no one on Rumble yet. I see seven people watching. Get in that chat, people. Do it up. Make sure you're not fake fake views. 